Hey, what's going on everyone? I'm Chris. I'm here with Kathy. We go by Ginger Marvin on Instagram and YouTube. We are full-time resellers and one of the things that we use to sell and clearance out some items is a consignment sale called Just Between Friends. You might see us talk about it quite a bit on some of our videos, talking about JBF and Just Between Friends. And we figured we wanted to work on a video to show you how we use JBF to um, help our reselling business. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn it over to Kathy and we'll talk about JBF. Hey guys. Um... <laughs> All right, so what is JBF? <laughs> All right, so um, it's just a consignment sale where you can sell anything for children um, and even ours has a junior section as well. Um, you not just clothes, but you could sell shoes, you could sell um, pretty much anything like uh, baby <laughs> equipment, carriers, even beds, like toddler beds, pretty much anything that has to do with kids, you can sell it there. Bikes, um, power wheels, yep, toys. Big, big toys, little toys. Clothes. All the toys. Yeah, the clothes are what we have ready here to show yeah. you today, but uh, we have other random things too that we can go through. So yeah. Um, so quickly, how did we get started in JBF? So way back when I <laughs> like bought a bunch of stuff at a garage sale, basically like so I went to the garage sale. I found a lot of stuff I liked. They were just yeah. charging 25 cents a piece because they were like going on a missions trip or something. So I picked out everything I wanted at the time, but they had like thousands and thousands of pieces. Like this was where like their whole church like donated mm. so much stuff. So I did not get through all of it while I was there. So I just told the lady, hey, I live down the street. Um, if you want to give me, I'll give you my number. If you want to call me when it's over, I'll make an offer on the whole rest of the clothes. So. Yeah. I did that, and I ended up with probably thousands of pieces of clothes. You know, <laughs> I sorted them. Some were kids, some were adults. Some went in the garbage, some went to Goodwill. Uh, some of them I took to Once Upon a Child, Clothes Mentor, Plato's Closet, things like that. Um, made some instant money that way. And other things that they didn't take, I had to figure out what to do with. So I found just between friends and decided to try it out. So at that very first sale, I think was the most items I've ever brought because... They didn't used to have a limit like they do now. Um, I think I brought 1,500 items to that very first sale. And yeah. So it's and we are based in Colorado <laughs> Springs, and that was the Colorado Springs sale. Yeah. So how do we use JBF now in our reselling business years later after your first sale? Uh, so now I don't like buy as much as I did that time. Mm -hmm. So now I just kind of use it to either clearing stuff out like things that I bought to resell online and that either haven't sold or I'm just tired of looking at them or sometimes I buy things specifically for it still but not on quite as big of a scale like yeah uh, a few of these items I'm looking at I know I got at the Goodwill outlet store so that just means I paid by the pound so this little onesie probably cost me 30 cents and I'll be able to sell it for four or five bucks probably so yeah um I just our Goodwills charge like 99 cents for kid clothes a lot under like size 4T. So sometimes I'll buy stuff from there um, on half off days and stuff like that. And then I also use it for selling our own kids' outgrown stuff that's not worth at least like 20 bucks to list online. So. Yeah. We also use it to source, like when you're involved in the sale, right? You want to talk about that? Oh, sourcing, yeah. So I do like to so we sell our stuff there but then whenever you're a seller and then um, when you work a shift you can go to the pre-sale and so I like to go there and buy some stuff to resell online mm -hmm. um, so that's called sourcing so I go to the JBF source the items that I want to sell online I mean, just that kind of getting <laughs> as much use out of JBF as we can all right, so if that sounds interesting to you, something that you might want to try out on your own, I'm going to show you guys how to sign up for a sale and see if there's one locally to you because it is nationwide. All right, so if you're looking to sign up for a sale, um, just go to your browser and type in jbfsale.com. Then you're going to want to click up top here at locations. Uh, you can, you know, click on your state here and find the one closest to you. They also have all the different states down here. Um, and different cities or you can just type in like a zip code close to you and see now it's pulling up all the ones here in Colorado um, let me just so I, this is the one I'm doing this week the Fountain Pueblo once I've clicked on that I'm going to want to click how to consign 
Then I'm gonna wanna click register to consign. Um, I already have an account, but if you don't, just click create account and then just fill in all that info there. But since we already have an account, I'm just gonna log in and yeah. Uh, so yeah, the sale that is coming up this week, then once you're in and um, signed up for the sale, it'll show you the, the event details, different consigner details, um, and then if you want to work a shift to make more money at the sale, you would click help at the sale. And if you need to email the owner of the sale for any reason, you can click contact organizer. So, All right, so after you've created your account, you're going to want to start tagging your items. Um, so I'm, I'm going to go through clothes first. I've already put everything on hangers just to make it quicker for the video, but um, most likely if you're watching this, you don't already have your clothes all on hangers. So um, you do have to provide your own hangers. So um, things that I do to get cheap hangers are either asking on neighborhood pages. Um, a while back, Old Navy would give out bags of them because they said that they were just tossing them. So I don't know if they still do that, but it's worth a shot. Um, sometimes when I'm out thrifting, I see them there and they usually price them less than at like Walmart or Target and then usually nobody buys them. So they're always like half off like 50 cents for a 20 pack or something. Um, or if worse comes to worse and I'm just in a pinch, I just buy them at Walmart or Target and they're not terribly expensive. They're like 10 for a dollar. So yeah, uh, so once you have all your items on hangers for clothes, um, I did want to mention like pants. There's like no good way to hang pants if you don't have a pant hanger. So. Like I did have some random old navy pant hangers, but for other ones that I didn't, I just safety pinned them to the hangers. What did I do the first year that was so bad? Oh, don't hang it to the bottom of the hanger. Mm -hmm. uh, Cause if you do, I kind of want to show you. That first sale guys was so bad. <laughs> I wish I had a little person helping me back then. Telling if me only you had that. a YouTube video to watch. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Okay, so my first sale, when I said I brought 1,500 items, that was not a joke. I did. And I hung all the pants like this, so you can imagine yeah. that they all just did this. So <laughs> don't do that. Don't be like me. Hang it on the top yeah. of the hanger, so that way if it slides, it's only just barely. But yeah, um, so that's what I do for pants. The safety pins. Why do I always want to call them paper clips? These are safety <laughs> pins. Um... We usually get them at Walmart just because it's close to our house and I know exactly in the store where to find it. And like one time when I looked on Amazon, they were kind of expensive. So they might be cheaper now. I'll take a look, but yeah, we buy the safety pins for the pants. And so that's how we hang everything. I did already put a few in order just so I can show you guys how to type them in. Was I missing anything with the hanging? I don't think so just so you do not get your hangers back after the sale like when the people buy your stuff they take the hanger with it so mm -hmm. yeah if you're gonna keep doing sales you're gonna have to keep getting more and more hangers so so the way it works when you're typing in it prints nine tags to a page so I like to work in nines so I've already got these these are like my son's old clothes and they're all like in order size three four or five I think um, I do recommend putting things in order that way before you start typing. It'll go a lot faster because you do have to change categories for different stuff. So there's like boy clothes, girl clothes, toys. So mm -hmm. the more organized you can be before you start, the quicker you're going to be at typing them in. So yeah, let's shoot back over to the computer. Uh, so now that you are logged into your account, just click tagging up here at the top. And then at the very top, Click create tags and then rapid entry. Um, and then first up I'm doing boys clothes. So I'm just gonna do clothing boys. See my first item is a boys three. All right, so then once you do that, you'll just type a description. I mean, some people are very vague, like just saying shirt, but I would recommend at least letting yourself know what the item is because Things do go missing at these sales, so just in case your tag falls off or something, they can easily find your item. So, my first thing here. Pretty size three, and then you're gonna wanna give it a price. Um, so pricing is something we get asked about a lot. Uh, usually if stuff's coming to this sale, I really wanna get rid of it, so I'm not gonna price it terribly high. Um, 
Tucker and Tate is a Nordstrom brand, so probably higher than like Carter's or something like that, but not like $10. Like if you're, I would not recommend pricing most anything over like $10 for clothing. So I'm probably going to do, let's just say it's a pretty nice hoodie. I'm going to do $8, but I do let my items go half off. So um, right here where it says reduce this little checkbox, that means you're letting your item go half off. Um, so the last two days of the sale, this, my hoodie, if it didn't sell already, would be only $4 for anyone that finds it. So, and I'm okay with that. So if you do not want to let your items go half off, you would need to uncheck that box. Cause when your tag prints, it's going to print a star on it and that's going to tell them whether or not it's half off. So if you don't want it half off, do not, or unclick that reduce box. Also, I don't donate any of my items because I do a bunch of sales throughout the year. So, but if you just want to do the sale once and you're just don't want anything back at the end, you don't want to go pick up anything at all, you can click donate and they'll just uh, donate your items to whatever charity they chose for that sale. All right. So then since I already have my items in order, we're still on 3T. So this is just a Cat and Jack. Future. Focused sweatshirt, size 3T. Cat and Jack is just a Target brand, so I'm probably gonna do like 450. And again, it can go half off. Okay, flannel button up. So this is actually a 4T, but it fits like a 3T, so I'm not gonna change the sizing at all. I'm just gonna type a note to whoever might pick this shirt up at the sale. I don't wanna put it in the 4T category and then someone buy it for their kid, get it home and it not fit them. So since this is my son's shirt, I know it fits small. I'm gonna do okie dokie, I think is like Kohl's or something. So again, not a very expensive brand to begin with. I'm just gonna do like $4 and then let it go half off. All right. And we got a Zara hoodie. We do see like 550 half off. So the next thing I have is a cat and jack blazer, which um Cat and Jack again is just Target, but these blazers were like $25 new, I think. I did not buy this one new, but I have sold a few of them online and they do sell for an okay amount even used. So I don't, I think I'm gonna not let this one go half off and I'm gonna price it at eight, which is kind of a lot for a Target brand, but just because it's more of a, a nicer piece. And then if it does not sell, I'm gonna sell that one online and actually it might still fit my son for next Christmas. So that's just kind of how I think of stuff. If I'm not desperate to sell it, I don't wanna say desperate, but like if I might wanna keep it for any reason, I don't let it go half off. All right, so that was all my size three. So now I'm gonna change this to size four boys. And I have Sean White stripe long. Shirt size four five Nike red. Just do it in top size four. And where Broncos Manning jersey size four. Um, maybe ten is probably too much. Like I just said, I'm gonna just do eight, just because he's not even a player anymore. But and then let that go half off. And then last one in my pile here is Abercrombie Kids. Only an old button up shirt size five six bucks fits more like a four five. All right, 
So once you have all your items, just double check that if you want them to go all half off or not. Remember the only one I unchecked was that Cat and Jack blazer. And then if you want to donate anything, make sure you do check those donate boxes or if... So I have mine already set up to like never check those, but it might auto like check them. So just double check that. If you don't want to donate them, that those boxes are not checked. So, all right, I'm going to save that. All right, so now that I got my nine items here, um, you can see these check marks. Those are the ones I've done before that have already been printed. There's no check marks here, so that's telling me I have not printed these last nine. So I'm gonna check these little boxes here. Then go up to the top, click print tags, and then PDF, and then print, and then print. I don't want to print them to my label printer. I'm going to print them to my normal printer and print. All right, so we got our um, paper printed out. I did want to mention that uh, you do need cardstock, not just like regular paper, because these tags do go through a lot. Uh, people are taking them off the shelf constantly. So, yeah, if you have a paper tag, it's most likely going to rip. And if it rips, they are not going to know who to pay for it, which is you. So, um, yep, use card stock. All right, so let's go back over to the table and I'll just show you guys now how to put these on the clothes. All right, so I got my card stock and so we have a paper cutter. We got it a long time ago at a, like an auction. So we only paid a couple bucks for it. I know most people are not gonna have a paper cutter. So scissors work just as fine. Um, everything's already got dotted lines on it for you. So obviously you guys know how to cut on dotted lines, but I'm just gonna quickly do it. All right, so um, we do have a tagging gun, and I honestly would recommend if you're going to do this to buy one. Um, the other way to do it is with the safety pins, but honestly, those cost more um, if you're going to have to buy a lot, and they also stab your fingers yeah. a lot more. If you value just, your fingertips. <laughs> yeah, I'm honestly, when I'm shopping at the sales, a lot of people do use them, and I'm constantly getting stabbed by them, so... Uh, I just looked up on Amazon. These are, there's a whole bunch of them, um, anywhere from 10 to $15. And that comes with like a thousand plus barbs, which are these guys. So basically for 10 to $15, if you're taking a thousand items, you can tag them all in one go around. Um, and then you can just order the barbs whenever you need them. So here we go. Um, so this is up close of what the tag looks like. So that they're telling you, you know, safety pin that, but I'm just going to put my tagging gun mark through there and then uh, you don't want to leave a hole in the clothes so uh, wh where I usually do it is like in the wrist somewhere like on the inners of the wrist and it's important to have them all hanging the same way right uh, yeah so they just have to hang like you would normally hang in your closet like just what is I don't know if so like face side yet. facing left yeah, basically. Is that a rule or is that just your rule? Uh, it has to be that way. Like, I've okay. I've heard the workers say that you have, or like, made people switch all their hangers before. So, okay. Yeah, just make sure you hang them the right way. And then when Isn't you, that the right? I mean, that's literally just the right I way. I mean, it's hang, it's right? like toilet paper, right? Like, over under. I it's, don't think so. Who I think there's a right way, but. Who hangs their stuff the other <laughs> way? I don't know. I don't care what way the toilet paper goes, but there's only one yeah. right way to hang something. So. Yeah. All right, anyways, so that's that. Um, you could also... I was just going to point out, when you hang it that way, just make sure your tag is on the outside. So see how it's... If the way the hanger is hanging, the tag has to be visible to yeah, you. Yeah, so the person's going to be shopping like this, you know? Yeah. And they're going to just want to maybe look at the price, so... Um, I don't know. Like, I, I did just see a thing that says you could tag it here, here... Just don't leave a hole in the clothing. Yeah. Um, I'd recommend tagging it just on the sleeve so it does hang down here. And you did that inside the sleeve through the yeah the hem thing, right? This the yeah. So just like right here, I'm gonna just go like right in here. You can stab yourself with this thing too, so just be careful. But it's just right there, and it doesn't leave a hole or anything on the outside. So. Hanger. 
Oh, that was something I wanted to mention. So I have this on a kid singer. You can see it's kind of like falling off. At these sales, it's going to fall off, mm -hmm. and nobody's going to pick it up. It's just going to fall <laughs> on the ground. People are going to step on it. So, yeah, I'm going to switch this hanger to an adult hanger, but just make sure that if you only have baby hangers, like if this is the only hanger I had, I would safety pin it here so it doesn't fall off because mm -hmm. if it falls off and gets dirt on it, they're going to put it in the back and not, like, let it be for sale. They're going to just give it back to you at the end and say it was stained or something. There is a quality control to these too, right? Like if they find too many stained items from a person, you yeah. might get charged. Uh, they charged all do for them it. different, yeah. Some of them, if you get less than three items taken off the floor, you're considered a perfect consigner. Uh, not all sales have that though. Yeah. Some of them, if you get more than three, you're charged like 50 cents an item. So um, you're not supposed to sell stained items. So just really try to be honest there. I know mm -hmm. we all miss stuff, but don't purposely go sell stained items because you will get dinged for it. <coughs> and yeah, tagging is something where I'm able to help Kathy. We're able to kind of watch some YouTube or, you know, it's it's kind of mindless work. You just got to make sure you get the right tag on the right clothing. And <laughs> Yeah, it's fairly simple. Tagging some of these through the tag, even though just said otherwise. All right, and then what was I gonna say? Oh, um, so just like I type these in in order, you're gonna wanna keep stuff in order as much as you can. So how I mentioned that very first sale, I took 1500 items. So those 1,500 items I just threw in random bins. I did not put them by gender, by size, by anything. I just took them all there. I didn't know what to expect. Um, it took us, Chris helped me. This was when our first son was like a little baby, so five, six years ago. And it took us like eight hours to unload mm -hmm. my stuff. Mm -hmm. Now I can do the same amount of items in about an hour by myself without mm -hmm. his help. So. Uh, so after you tag all this, so now that they're back in order, size 3, size 4, you're going to want to put them in a bin or however you want to do it. I've seen people, like, take a garbage bag and just kind of put it, put a hole in the top, put it over the clothes, and then just tie it up at the bottom, like, yeah, just to keep them if you don't have Kind of like a dry cleaning yeah, bag so. kind of thing. I'm going to put mine in here like this. But, yeah, when you get to the sale... You're just going to want everything organized because that's going to make it so fast and easy to put up on the shelves once yeah. you get there. So We have a lot of bins. We use bins and we store them in a enclosed trailer that we keep pretty much just for JBF stuff. So that's where we store all of our stuff on, in the off season. All right, guys. So I did want to show you quickly how, to, how I do shoes anyways. There's many ways to do it, um, but we... At the same place that we got that paper cutter, we got like thousands of these, um, <laughs> what are these, zip ties? Yeah, they they're kind of different. Yeah. I always have to cut the edge because they have like a little stopper and it's yeah. huge if you don't. So anyways, we use these. Um, you can buy them pretty much anywhere too. I find them to be the easiest way to keep everything together. But I've also seen people put like a... I would not recommend this. I've seen people put like a big safety pin through both shoes, but that does leave like a little hole. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this is what we do. I just put them both together with the zip tie. Oops. Ninety percent of shoes are gonna have a way that you can put them together like this. I just cut off the excess here. Um, and then yeah, so nobody can really just take one unless they like cut it. So, um, and then like here, I would just put them through this little back loop. But if for some reason you don't have any loop or anything at all to put them through, it's pretty rare. But I would use a ziplock in that case. Just put the shoes in the bag. And honestly, I would try to tape the yeah. uh, edge shut, even though someone's probably gonna open it, but. You're going to want to keep your stuff together the best you can because if one shoe gets lost, it's most chances you're not going to find the match. So, um, that being said, I did want to mention like 
don't take anything to the sale that you're not okay with losing. Uh, I'm not gonna say that like we lose a ton of stuff because I don't think we do. I honestly don't ever really check mm -hmm. other than like the very big items that are on trying to sell for like 50 plus dollars, but I'm sure we lose a few clothes at each sale and it's just, to me, it's just cost of doing the sale. Um, yeah. I'm not saying like people steal, but like I do cashier sometimes and I know I'm not saying that I don't scan stuff because I, I do scan everything. You can but see where it could there's easily a like disconnect. forget to scan one item yeah. or you thought you scanned it and it didn't scan or something like that could happen easily. A lot of times people will be buying the stroller and forget to like say that they're buying the stroller and not hand the cashier the stroller tag or maybe yeah. a little tiny pair of shoes like this gets stuck at the bottom of their bag and doesn't get scanned or in the bottom of their stroller. So, yeah. If you're not okay with losing it, I would just say don't even bring it to the sale. So, but yeah. Uh, zip tie, you can safety pin or use like zip locks for shoes, for books. I'd recommend using like a, the blue, is painter's tape only blue? Like do they have? No, but there's um, any kind of tape like painter's tape. We personally use the blue, so I'm not going to say any of it will work. <laughs> I definitely would not use, like, the masking tape, like the white kind of masking yeah. tape. That usually leaves a residue. The so, yeah, basically for books, like, if you use what we use for packaging up sales, that's going to yeah. rip the back of the book when they take it off. So I would recommend using the blue painter's tape for books, just so that when they take it off, it just comes right off. That being said sometimes they fall off at the sale so again if you're really worried i guess don't use that but um they do have a thing at the end of the sale where like anything with the lost tag is on a table so usually you can find your stuff at the end if that's the case but i have had some tags fall off books even when i do use like the real tape that would rip the back of the book so yeah uh what else was i gonna i think that was it or... any kind of big toys will have yeah, so like we have Lincoln Logs. Let's see. I don't have a ton of toys to tag at the moment, but I'm gonna be doing these Lincoln Logs. I don't know. I'll probably just, I don't know, because I don't want to tape off the top and then them not be able to see it. Right. I think that I just put a bunch of <laughs> forks in there or something. <laughs> like they want to <laughs> know that it's actually Lincoln Logs. I don't know how I'm gonna do these then. I mean, I'll probably put a tape over the lid, but they can open it if they need to. And then on this, I'd probably, yeah, maybe use the painter's tape as well to not rip the box, but the box is already ripped, so. Uh, something like a, a toy like this, I'd probably use a zip tie again. Or... Yeah, and these zip ties that we have, they're not like your standard zip tie. I'll show you. You can kind of see they have these um, spaces where we can put one of those barbs, those tagging barbs through there. Um, this one you could technically like use the tagging gun through the fabric. It wouldn't really leave much of a hole because this is the kind of fabric you can just yeah. wipe it a little and the hole would go away. But yeah, so that's it as far as tagging that I can think of. Um, what am I trying to, so like in the past I've had huge, like tons of Legos or Mega Blocks or something like that. And we've bought in these huge Ziplocs that are like this big. <laughs> if you want to just, like if you have like a toy like that, but you don't have a bag for it, yeah. you can buy a ginormous thing like that. Just tape it at the top, put the tag on it. So, but yeah. I that's yeah, I think just use your best judgment as to keeping things yeah. as together as possible but still making it so that the person who's interested in buying them can still verify, right? That at least what they are what they think they're buying is what they're buying. Yeah. All right, guys, so I did want to mention um, for you guys to read through your consigner details before you do attempt to just show up at the sale. Um, I was, since I'm doing all these sales in the next couple weeks, I noticed I was reading through all the consigner details on them all before I started and they're all just slightly different so uh, just to make sure that you're following all the rules make sure you're gonna read these so just click consigner details and then you're just gonna want to kind of read through all of these so uh, let's see 
So you're gonna wanna register to consign. We've already done that. Um, read preparing your items below. So we'll get there, start tagging. You know, we went through quickly how to start tagging some clothing. Um, and then when you consign with JBF, at least in Colorado, you get 60% of your sales right off the bat. If uh, less a $13 consigner fee. So that's at this sale. I did notice at like Colorado Springs, their fee is $20 and then um, their fee is actually $20 per 500 items. So like if you do more than each 500, you're paying $20 fee essentially. This one here, I think it's just a $13 fee. They don't seem to have a limit on the amount of items you can bring for that. So, well, I do think, I actually do think that they max you out at a thousand, but you would still just pay that same $13 fee. Uh, so yeah. Um, the fee that you pay here just goes to help them. They have to rent out a big building for this event to happen in. They also have to pay advertising fees, radio, um, internet, like Google searches, Facebook ads, things like that. So that's what that consigner fee goes to, which honestly is well worth it. All you have to do is just show up with your items and pay that small fee and hundreds and thousands of people are going to come look at your items over the week or the weekend. So well worth it. Um, and then if you do work a shift, you can bump up your earnings to 70%. So again, these are the Colorado numbers. It might be different in your state, depending where you live. Um, so consigners and team members get to shop before the public. So that's a nice benefit of consigning. Um, I love going to the pre-sale to source for items to sell in my online stores. But yeah, um, Ours also have like, if you work more shifts or if you work at least one shift, you can go to like one of the first pre-sales. And then if you work more shifts, you can go earlier and earlier. So just a, um, a benefit of working more shifts or just wanting to shop earlier, things like that. So helping out the sale, that's where it's telling you what you can do to earn more on your sales. So a four hour team member, at least at this sale, it might be different at yours. Some of the sales that I work, you have to do like a five hour, some are like a two to three hours. So just make sure that you read through. Um, so the four hours, you would earn 70%. You get a shop early and you also get a shop early on the half, half price and 75% off price sales. Um, if you work eight hours, then you can shop early, even earlier than the 2 p.m and you can bring a guest, things like that. And then if you do 12 hours in shifts, you can shop the at the very earliest out, 1.30. So again, these numbers are gonna change depending on where you live. Um, and then here's just the drop off and pick up info. Right now we are in March of 2021, which means it's still kind of like COVID and um, so there's just lots of restrictions everywhere out there still. So this particular sale that I'm doing this week, they had us sign up for a drop-off slot as well as a pickup slot. In the past, they would just say things like, you know, show up between two to four, put your items out. But now they had everyone schedule. That way they know how many people are gonna be in the building at any one time and they can keep it to a minimum. So just make sure you read through and um, so that you can get your slot. And yeah, um, I did wanna mention that you have to pick up whenever it says so like I know that our pickup is like on Sunday evening I think it's only like a two hour window which again I scheduled but if even if we didn't schedule it's only two hours so like if you could not make it in those two hours you're either forfeiting your items you need to send someone else in your place or yeah that's pretty much it like you have to pick up your items they cannot hold them for you they have nowhere to put them um, so just if you're not gonna be able to pick them up, I would say either just skip that sale or just be okay with donating your items at the end. Um, here you can just click through some different uh, ways, some different videos to help you learn how to tag, how to price, what tagging supplies that would be useful, and then the different things that you can sell, um, infant and preteen clothing. I know some of the sales here uh, limit you to um, in the use sections like limit the pieces you can bring mostly because that section doesn't get shopped a whole lot so uh, just make sure that you read through and see what you can bring 
And then you can bring equipment, furniture, toys, infant items, books, games, DVDs, arts and crafts, bedding, blankets, textiles, shoes, uh, bags, baby carriers, maternity items. And then their top selling items are gonna be strollers and car seats, pack and plays, high chairs, cribs, toddler beds, bicycles, ride on toys, outdoor toys, sporting goods. So um, I can definitely say that any of these huge items that we've ever brought to the sale have sold like right away and for really decent money like more than you're going to get at a garage sale or anything like that so if you have those like pack and play type things uh the outdoor structures t plastic toys things like that bikes those are going to sell really well um and then yeah books dvds games video games clothing and shoes so um, and then they have a thing called power seller guidelines. So power seller is meaning that you have like a lot of items. It's going to be different at each sale, like this sale here. So they do have a thousand item limit. If you have between 750 to a thousand items, you're going to be considered a power seller. So let's see right now. I'm at 641. I'm dropping off this Thursday right now. It is Sunday. So I'll just make sure I don't go over 750 because I don't want to do what it's saying I have to do if I'm a power seller. So um, basically you'd have to work this two hour shift or pay $20 for someone else to do it for you. And since I am going to be selling at two to three more sales in the next couple weeks, I am I know my items are going to sell at one or another. So I'm just not going to, I'm just not going to be a power seller this time around. But in the past, I usually have a thousand items in which case I would have to do all these extra things so um, I did want to mention that these power seller guidelines are different at each sale um, I noticed at the one I'm doing next week or in a few weeks it's what was it it was like over 500 items you're considered it and you have to work the breakdown shift so that one I may have to do we'll see how many items I'm left with after this Pueblo sale coming up this week um, valet consigning is just, yeah, so if you're too busy to tag or if you just don't want to tag, um, but you do want to make some extra cash, you can have one of the people do it for you. So you would just, you know, click through here and email and find out if someone in your area is a valet consigner. Um, yeah, so they would just, you would drop off all your items to them. They tag them all, but they would take a good portion of what you sell. Like they get paid I'm not sure exactly. It's either per item or percentage, but yeah, they're going to get a portion of what you sell and then you would just get your portion, which if you're not doing really any work, that's pretty nice just to have that extra money. Um, perfect consigners. I don't think that this is at every sale, but this one coming up, basically like if you consign with them and you have less than three items removed from the floor, so like they'll remove items for like stains, rips, um, like if you bring a toy that is battery operated but it doesn't work or have batteries in it, they'll pull that. So if you don't get three items taken off the floor, you're technically a perfect consigner, in which case you would skip the um, inspection process, which is a good thing to get to skip because that's just a lot of time that you can just put your items out and not have to wait for people to look through them also. Um, definitely try your best to not, you know, you're not allowed to bring items that are stained, torn, things like that. So, of course, we're all going to miss some, but just do your best to not bring those types of items. And anything that needs batteries, make sure you put batteries in it before you go. Um, I know one of the sales I go to, if it doesn't have batteries, they will put them in there for you to test it. Like, if somebody wants to buy it, but they'll charge you $1 for it. All right, and then just at the bottom here are just different tutorials that you can watch again to just kind of uh, see different ways of doing things. So, yeah, I think that's basically it. But the main takeaway is just make sure that you read your own state's guidelines, your own sale that you're going to do. If you're going to do more than one sale in your area, make sure you read them both. They're both going to be different. I did want to mention um, how you can kind of check your sales throughout the sale. So once the sale starts, um, right here at the top, you're going to be able to click on, what is it, reports, and then sold items. Obviously, there's not a sale happening right now, so this is going to show nothing. But 
um, you just select your sale percentage. So like most likely I'm gonna get be getting 70% and then that consigner fee for this coming sale was $13. So you would click that and that and then run the report and then it would pop up with all your items that had already sold for the day or the week. I did want to mention like, so sometimes it it's like in real time, as soon as you make a sale, it'll pop up. If you refresh, it'll pop up again. So that's that's how it usually is, but there has been a couple times where the sales don't end up to the, don't um, show your total till the end of the day. So that's been kind of stressful. I'm thinking I didn't make any sales and then as soon as it's closing time, I'll just refresh and it'll show all my sales for the day. So that could be how it's happening on yours. So don't freak out thinking you haven't sold anything. Um, yeah, it might just be taking a while to update. So it's really fun to watch it watch stuff sell though throughout and see what's selling all right guys so that was pretty much what i thought was important to let you know um so once the sale is over if you're like a lot of people choose to work that breakdown shift because then they can just take their items straight from there and then leave um, but if you choose not to work that breakdown shift there's usually a time frame where you pick up your sold unsold items and then either your check sell like some of the sales I do give you your check right at pickup and some of them give it to you in your email in a few weeks after or in the actual mail a few weeks after. So you'll have to figure out with your sale how they do that. But yeah, um, the pickup's really easy. If you're not working the breakdown, you just show up and everything's already pre-sorted for you under your um, consigner number, which they'll tell you if you don't know it. But yeah, they'll put like everything will just be in a little hanging for you any bigger items or shoes will just be in a bit on the floor for you and just take them out and that's pretty much it so if you guys have any questions I'm sure I missed something that somebody's been wanting to know so leave them in the comments we'll definitely respond to those questions but yeah all right so that is going to do it for this video on how we use just between friends to uh clearance out some of our items and how to how we use it to source some new items so hopefully if you had any questions we answered them in this video um, but if you do have anything that you want to know do leave it in the comments below and we'll try to answer as best as we can like kathy said many times every jbf sale is going to be different a little bit so hopefully this at least gives you enough confidence to be able to um, go to your local jbf and start selling so Anyway, guys, that's going to do it. We'll see you in the next one. Bye.